Hey everyone, it's Allison at Determined to Shine, where we use the magic formula of creativity, spiritual connection, and community to bring forth joy and hope in our lives, especially during dark times. I am here today with a super fun video response to the hashtag Tarot Collector. This was created by Brant over at Moon Baby, and I will link his original video in the description box. And this is just a really fun hashtag that has nine prompts getting everyone to show different fun things in their collection. So I've been really enjoying watching everyone else's videos and decided it was time for me to join in. So I will kick things off with um, prompt number one, which is my most expensive deck. Now, I have a lot of really beautiful, independent, independently created, like gorgeous decks in my collection, but... Um, the one that I, I paid the most for out of the gate um, will uh, surprise maybe no one, maybe everyone, um, but it is my Hello Kitty Tarot. This is a very hard deck to find um, at a reasonable price, and I could not, so I decided to pay that expensive price that we often see on Etsy. This is right around $100. Um, and I, I honestly, I have no regrets. Um, I did edge it in black, which makes it look um, awesome. And um, the cards are just, you know, a variety of Hello Kitty characters. There are a couple Hello Kitty tarots out there, but I really wanted this one that put the characters in the traditional Rider Waite Smith um, poses. And so that is what I got. And, you know, I love pop culture, it's a big part of my life. Um, I have a lot of fun with it, I relate to it. I feel like I was experiencing signs and um, messages through music and TV and movies long before I ever got to um, to playing with tarot and um, or to reading tarot. And I just really, this deck is just magic for me. I love it. Um, I did put it in order for you guys just to see how it's organized. It's kind of one character per suit after the majors. Um, and they just did a really fun job. So, um, I don't, I don't regret this purchase at all. I think it was well worth it. Um, and I'm super happy I bought it. So my most expensive deck is the Hello Kitty Tarot. Hashtag worth it. Next up is the least expensive deck in my collection, and this is the Spirit Halloween Store or Spencer's tarot card deck. I think it was $6. Um, it has a variety of fantasy creatures as the different cards for every card. Um, and I'm going to be honest, like while I love the art, um, this deck doesn't read really well at all. The... I mean, this. What does this have to do with the Ten of Cups? Like, they, none of the art really matches the card meanings at all. Um, but it is fun. I will actually probably rehome this in my declutter series later. I do have two copies of this deck. I bought one specifically to cut up and what I'll call play art with. So I do have that copy um, that I've kept just because I do use it in journals and things like that. Cause like, this is gorgeous. I love the art. It's really beautiful. Um, and I love the creepiness of some of them and the, um, variety, I guess, but I don't, I just don't think it's a deck that's meant to be read with and that's okay. It's, you know, it's a Halloween store deck. It's a novelty deck. Um, and it was six bucks. And so I have no regrets, but, um, probably will not keep this in my collection as a deck for reading. But who doesn't want to cut that out and put it in a art journal, right? Absolutely. All right, so that is my least expensive deck. So the third prompt to answer is the deck that other collectors most want to steal. And I debated on this for a while, and I thought really hard about it. It's 
It might be actually my independent Kickstarter version of the Lightseer's Tarot, but since that is a deck that everyone has seen many times, I decided that I would go with the Delos Tarot. This is out of print. Um, it was hard for me to find. It took a long time for me to track this down after seeing it online. It is the second edition. It is signed and numbered, but it's inside the box, so it looks like it's 494 of 900. You can see it all the way down in there. Um, but this is just a like super cute deck. Like I love this card back. I think it's adorable. It has this like innocent storybook style of art that I really, really enjoy. Um, and I just think it's like, I love this Empress with the, the waterfall and the kitty cat and oh, look at temperance. I just, I really like this deck. Um, and so because it is hard to find and because it is adorable and because I don't see it very often, I chose it as the deck other collectors would most want to steal. Um, I believe the author or the artist is from South Korea. If I recall, I think it might say, yeah, it's made in Korea. Um, And so it does say, yeah, it's a faithful reproduction of the original deck created by Pamela Coleman Smith in 1909. So, you know, the, the symbology is all there, which I enjoy in decks when I need a good reader. Um, but it's so much more adorable. And I am all about the adorable. So that is, look at this. I love this strength card. I think this is the card that sold me on this deck um, when I really started to chase it down. Yeah, it just makes me really happy. So that's the Delos Tarot. It does come with a little book, though I don't, I don't know if I've ever even looked in it. It doesn't appear to be in English, so uh, that's probably why I've never looked in it. <laughs> All right, that is the Delos Tarot. So the next prompt is the strangest deck in my collection. And for that, I chose the Cute and Creepy Tarot by Misha. And I do not see this deck in videos online, hardly ever. I don't know if I've ever actually ever seen it in a video. Um, but it it's strange. Um, it's just the artist cards. So um, it's gold gilded. It's really cute. That's the card back. But like... It's, it's a strange deck, y'all. Like, I don't even say y'all. I don't know why I said that. Um, but it's, it's just got, um, just very odd depictions of things. And it is both, as the title suggests, cute and creepy. I, I super love this strength card. I love the hermit card. I love a lot of the cards. That's why I bought it. But it's absolutely strange. Um... This is really, I think, a fascinating depiction of the devil. I love this tower a lot. This is one of my favorite tower cards out there. Um, I just think it's really cool. And it's weird. Look at this Four of Cups, though. This is a Six of Cups. This is, you know, Six of Cups is my, what I call my alley card. It's the card that I think most um, personifies my personality, at least certainly in the minors. Um, and so I just think that's adorable, especially because I have some very funny Loch Ness Monster <laughs> memories, which is what that makes me think of. Um, but yeah, just all kinds of wacky, there's like, yeah, it's, it's just strange, you know, strangest deck, that's the winner. Um, if you, I will put links for all these decks in the comments, but if there's any that you want to see, um... Be sure and let me know, and I will. That's intense. In the back, one in the front, self-inflicted. Um, let me know if there's any you want to see, and I will do a full walkthrough for you. But, like, look at these. It's just weird. Strange. <sighs> Such a cool ton of wands. I don't know. It's strange. I need to uh, read with it. I haven't done much with it at all since I got it. Um kind of falls in a category of I got a whole bunch of decks at once um 
and pulled them into my collection a little more quickly than I would have liked, um, which I'll be talking about more in an upcoming declutter video, but, um, so I haven't read with it much, but it is, it is indeed my strangest deck. So the next prompt is the deck that other collectors are least likely to have. And I would be shocked if anybody has this. Um, I've never seen anybody talk about it or anything since the original Kickstarter and it barely funded. Um, it needs a new bag. It needs a mod really badly. Um, and I'll, you'll see why in a minute. This is the Crybaby Tarot. And this is based on the album music album and music, um, the album cry baby by Melanie Martinez. And she is a, um, pop singer. I'm not sure what kind of singer to call her. Um, she's a singer, a singer songwriter. She writes very quirky, strange songs, um, and creates even stranger music videos. Her biggest influences, um, is Tim Burton. And so this whole deck is created like from her universe of, um, of music videos, um, just off this one album called cry baby. And that's how she wears her hair is split like that. Um, and then these are characters and then it is, it is a pip deck, um, which I was fine with. I knew that when I bought it, but as you can see, the quality on this, um, was, was pretty disappointing. I'm not going to lie. Like, it just feels really unfinished. Like the, um, the border is off. Like it's, um, it's off on all the cards, but, um, you know, you've got this tiny sliver of it over here with this big fat wide border on the other side and the edges are sharp. And so I need to trim this around the corners and edge it. And I think once I do that, I might, really enjoy playing with this deck. But for now, ever since it arrived, it's really just sat in my collection because I was really, quite frankly, so disappointed with the quality that I never really did anything with it, which is too bad because this album meant a lot to me. And this album is, um, it was her way of healing some of her mental health issues from childhood. And I found the videos and the the music to be incredibly healing for me, as as weird as it is, has been. But um, the deck, it just needs it just needs some TLC. But I do think it is absolutely the deck that other collectors are least likely to have. So the next prompt was either your oldest deck or the deck you've had the longest. And I chose to go with the deck I've had the longest because I've only been reading tarot for um, maybe five years and I don't, I don't really own any vintage decks. I mean, I have a couple that might be out of print, but I certainly don't collect versions of traditional decks. And actually it freaks some people out when they find this out, but in my collection of you know, well over a hundred, maybe 200, maybe more than that decks. Um, I have a lot of decks. I don't own a single RWS traditional Pamela Coleman Smith illustrated deck. And I probably should, but that art does not resonate with me at all. And I have so much value for her as an artist and what she did for the tarot, but it, it doesn't read for me, and I honestly didn't read tarot for a long time, even though it called to me for a lot of my life, because I was so put off by that art. So, it's just not for everyone. So, I don't have an old deck, but I have my first deck, and this will surprise no one who knows me. My first deck, and I was super into these, like, satin bags that match the decks from Los Garabeo, my first deck was the Happy Tarot. Um, and I got this, you know, a few years ago or however many years ago, I bought it for myself cause I learned I could, I edged it in this, um, really fun pink magenta purpley awesomeness that didn't come that way. Um, when I first was called to tarot, I was a little bit afraid of it. I'd been taught to be afraid of it. There's culture that says I should be scared of it. And so um, I found my way to tarot, um, by way of Oracle cards as many do. And then 
was had been feeling so drawn to tarot for so long and when I saw the happy tarot that was that was the one that was the one that wanted to be my first deck and so um I still I haven't read with this in a while because I just have so many that are new that I've been playing with and as I'm pulling this out I just feel like I'm seeing an old friend um this deck makes me so happy it had all the symbolism I needed, right? But in ways that made me happy, it totally fit my aesthetic. And I just, oh, I still love this deck. And, you know, it's sweet and adorable, but this deck has never been afraid to tell me the truth about my life or what I'm not looking at. Um, and I think it's because I, I see the world like this. I see the world in colors and candy and magic and happiness and joy. And even when life is really, really hard, I choose to see it that way. Like, I'm recording this on election day here in the United States. Um, and we'll probably get it posted on election day because I usually get them uploaded pretty fast. And in my world, you know, today's a hard day. And it's a hard day for all of America, I really believe. Um, and I still, you know, people have been calling and asking how I am and am I nervous and am I upset and how am I doing? And like, I'm okay because I see the world as a joyful place. I really still do. And that's not, that's not to say there isn't like some super hard stuff because there's a lot of really hard stuff. And there are a lot of very important things on the line. Like, make no mistake. Like, voting is, I think, a sacred and important act that I take very seriously. And I write to my representatives, and I get angry when I need to get angry. But in my heart, I am a joyful soul, and I always try to find the best in people and situations. And that's why I've been able to overcome a lot in my life. That's why, you know... I can still create magic and joy because i that's what determined to shine is about life is not always shiny but we can always be determined to create something better stronger more powerful more magical more joyful and so yes i'm a widow and yes i have multiple sclerosis but you know what like i, I have a great a great flip in life and i love it and this deck is the deck that reminds me of that and it's just so flippin' cute. And it's, like I said, it was my first and first and best friend. So, um, I may keep this out. This might be a nice, this might be a nice deck for me tonight. Oh, my little, there's like a little white book in here that just is catching on all of something all of a sudden. That's okay. Don't mind me, little white book. There you go. Um, I probably don't even need to be keeping it in this box because I keep it in the bag, but um, I had this whole bag box issue when I first started with tarot that it had to be in the box and it had to be in the bag. So, you know, I had to have the whole little matching set. But then I started buying decks that didn't have matching sets. And what was I going to do now? I don't know. Anyway, this is my first deck and I super love it. The next prompt is the newest deck to your collection, and for me, that is the Majestic Earth Tarot. I did not originally back that. Was this a Kickstarter? I don't remember. It was, you know, an independent deck, and people bought it, and I, I just, I didn't call to me originally, and then everybody had it, and then it was out of print, and it was a gazillion dollars, and then the creator released some, I guess, what we could call scratch and dent copies at a discount. And so um, even then I hesitated, but I decided, what the heck, I had to have one. I will admit that getting this deck was a case of FOMO for me because I wanted to see what all the fuss was about. But um, this just came into my collection um, last week. And I'm really actually quite thrilled with it. And um, this was a 30% off deck, which was the second like worst category of scratch and dents. And I can't find much wrong with it at all. There are a couple of small lines that I don't even think I can get to show up. Yeah, you can kind of see it there, right? Like it might be a crease, 
but it doesn't really look like a crease because it's not on the other side. So I don't know, but well worth it for 30% off. So, um, so I went ahead and got the Majestic Earth Tarot and boy, am I glad I did because it's gorgeous. And I do think for certain types of readings, this will be a great deck for me. I'm excited to give it an interview and learn how kind of me and this deck will play together. But, um, the art is beyond gorgeous. I love the, um, just the, the majestic photos, you know, it's our paintings. I'm not, it's, it's all just very, very beautiful. And, um, I think it'll be an excellent death for path working and just for really, um, exploring the tarot deeper and exploring my heart deeper. Like, What's waiting for me in this card? You know, I love using decks for meditation where I like, love to like imagine myself stepping into a scene and seeing who I might meet there and what might happen there. And um, so I'm excited to do that with this deck. And uh, this reminds me of Muir Woods. And I had such a powerful spiritual experience there with a very good friend of mine. Um, we went to, in San Francisco. And so, yep, so I haven't really looked at this much at all. You can see it is still in order. Um, but it is beautiful and I'm happy I gave in to the FOMO. I think I got one of the last, like, I think there were like maybe 20 copies left when I finally clicked the button and added it to my cart, but very glad I did. And that is my newest deck. So the next prompt is the deck that made you want to collect decks in the first place or how um brent put it in the video is like um the deck that made you be like oh man i have to have all of these and that for me is the nicoletta chicoli tarot this was the second deck i purchased again matching los Carabeo bag and deck and box and the whole nine yards um and i was just so drawn to this art. And as an artist, um, this is when I realized I could hold all these little pieces of art in my hands. I've often, you know, I mean, I'm an art journal, journaler. I like artist trading cards for this very reason. And I just loved the way these felt in my hands. Now, um, I don't read with this deck very often because, quite frankly, it's really hard to read with. Um, I don't feel like the meanings all match up very well. Um, I love what Don Michelle at Boho Tarot did with hers, so I may do that at some point. Um, but I do think it's beautiful and gorgeous and, um, sorry, there's so many reversals in here. Um... Yeah, I just, this is absolutely the deck that made me want to have all the decks. So, you know, originally I just had my happy tarot and then I went and got a second deck and then, well, here we are. That's the rest of the story, right? Okay, so that is the deck that made me want to have all the other decks. So the last prompt was for your favorite deck. And this was rough. Like, to be honest, I have like a, you know, million way tie. Um, but I'm going to show you two. And I did want to give honorable mention shout outs to the Playful Heart Tarot, which is probably artwork wise, maybe my soul deck. Um, though I think that's, you know, uh, I think I have a few of those. Um, a shout out to the, the Mermaid Tarot by Lisa Robertson, which um, is the deck that most often tells me the truth I need to hear. And then I have two, two more decks to show you as favorites. And the first one of those, which I have shown before, is the Way of the Panda Tarot. Um, because this, this deck is my, my ultimate hug. And there are some like fun bonus cards here at the bottom. The caffeinated panda. Um, this deck, you know, I love pandas. Of course, bears and bunnies are my, are my soul animals. Um, but this deck 
Um, I, it just comforts me. It comforts me when the world is a bad, bad place. And, um, it also really is an excellent reader for me. Like of all my various decks, especially those that are not straight RWS copies. Um, I read confidently with this. Um, this deck just cuts to my heart. It knows me. I trust it. Um, I only read for myself with this deck. It's beautiful, and um, look at that. There's my Six of Cups. With a kitty cat and a kitty cat. Mm. What a great election tip card. Um, but I just, yeah, I just love this deck. It sings to me, and all is right with the world when I have my Way of the Panda Tarot in my hands. So that is, that's the back. Isn't that beautiful? Um, favorite deck number one. Favorite deck number two I have also shown on this, on my channel, though this is the first time I'm showing it in its new home. It doesn't live in its box anymore because I got this gorgeous wrap from Moonlit Fae. It is designed especially for this deck. I did reverse it though, so that's the card image. This is what came on the outside, but this was the lining and I just flipped it around. This is, of course, the Simplicity Tarot. And for someone who doesn't love traditional looking decks, um, it's the closest, it's one of the closest ones I have. Um, I love this deck because I'm confident with it. Um, so this is my favorite. This is the deck I use to read for other people now. Um, something about the way the art and the keywords work together makes it so that I can read really, really well with this deck. And I don't, it's not that I just like know the keyword and like some of these I obviously know anyway, cause I like the longer I read, the more I know the cards, right? But for some of those minors where I don't always remember like exactly which card is the eight of pentacles or you know, three of wands. Like there's a couple that I just don't always remember quite as well. Maybe because they don't come up for me as much. Like I get a lot of cups and a lot of swords in my readings. <laughs> so the wands and the pentacles are harder for me. Um, something about that combination gives me exactly what I need to like dive into my intuitive reading from there. So this deck is... Um, it's just a really powerful one for me. So I will, um, I did do a full walkthrough with this deck along with a inspired art project and I'll link that video. And I also did an awesome interview with the creator of this deck, Emily Muniz. Um, and that was just, um, last week or the week before, maybe the week before, I can't remember. Time has no meaning in 2020. Um, and she talked about creating this deck and why she created it and how to read confidently. And so that's really um, definitely worth watching as well. So that is the Simplicity Tarot. And this is the deck that makes me um, just a lot more confident than I'd ever been as a reader. And so um, I'm really, this is kind of my trusted deck. It sits on, out on my altar space all the time, which is why I wanted to get this beautiful home for it. Um, and yeah, I just, I love it. And then look at this back. You can't beat this card back. This is one of the most gorgeous card backs I've ever seen. I should do that hashtag on card backs. I'm really behind on my VRs, you guys. Um, but that is my two favorite decks right now. One for the hugs it gives me and one for the hugs it helps me give others and confidence. So, um, that is my tarot collector hashtag response. I hope that you enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun pulling these together, um, both looking at some new decks and revisiting old friends, especially that happy tarot. Man, I needed that today. So enjoy. Be sure to check out all the hashtag tarot collector videos because they are so much fun. And I will see you guys very soon. Please remember, please, please, please remember darkness is temporary. And as I record this video, I have no idea what will happen on election night. All the polls are still open everywhere. The first ones close shortly. Um, I don't know what's going to happen, but we're all in this together. And I believe in hope. I believe that we can all be shine. So just remember whatever you're feeling today, 
or any other day, whenever you're watching this, just know that you are loved and the world is so much better because you're in it. So with that, um, I'm sending you all my love. If you enjoyed this video, please, of course, leave me a comment. Leave me a, um, a like if you liked it. Uh, subscribe. It helps me out a lot. I'm a baby YouTube channel, so close to a thousand subscribers as I post this. So it would be awesome to have you join in the fun. And of course, if you created a hashtag tarot collector video, please leave a link to that in the comments because I want to make sure that I get to see all the videos in case I have missed any. So sending you all lots of love and I will see you next time.